Mr. Gay, this guy on the right. Uh, I'm going to talk about a certain aspect of uh, fault tolerance now. If everything works. So a certain dark presence once observed that the problem with people is that they are sometimes unexpectedly mortal. And this is exactly how I feel about software. Sometimes it just dies on you and you never know when. So we all here write code. Our code is great, but we call third party libraries, all sorts of black boxes, databases, remote services. And you know, in life things happen. So the algorithm you call can suddenly be exponential in the input you gave it. You never expected that. And database has a disk failure just when you need this particular select query. And the remote services are across a network and the network can fail. So just don't get any data for ages. What you see in your code as a result of this is some sort of a fault. It can be a timeout, exception, or even invalid values. Or all of this, you, know, you never know. So. Usually you have some sort of handling of these issues, but uh, uh, we want to talk about some sort of a temporal dimension to this. So what we would like to have some sort of a library that instruments your existing calls to things that may fail. And these instrumentations allow you to acknowledge and record the events, the occurrences. So you can write them to a log, you can alarm if something terrible happened. Uh, I guess you're already doing this. Uh, we also want some sort of uh, alleviation using validation and normalization. So you get a bad result, you have some sort of a business logic that can realize that the value is bad and fix it on the fly. Uh, but the more important part is the avoided using circuit breaking. And the idea here is if you maintain a certain history of execution events, you can come up with a silly oracle and that oracle would say the chance of the next call to succeed is practically zero. Maybe you shouldn't make the call at all. And by skipping the call, you reduce the stress on your system in a very trivial and obvious way, but also on the remote system that may be already struggling because you're getting some issues here. So in terms of prior art, we did not invent it and the term circuit breaking is there for ages. Uh, Netflix had a library, Hysterix, it's a Java library, and they use it in their data centers and all over their code. There is also PyCurpine, which is a Python port of the same thing. They allow you to introduce circuit breakers that learn the history of execution of your code, and if they suspect that there is a problem, they will just ignore completely and go to the fallback stage. We wanted something like that in C++, obviously. It shouldn't be a surprise for you. People want C++ libraries. So we came up with this library with a somewhat strange acronym. It's for easy high constancy. It's a very forced acronym. And you pronounced it as Yozhik. Also, not obvious. It's a C++ library, no dependencies. We want it to be raw. You can compile it with your old favorite compiler that doesn't support C++ 11 yet. It will work open source MIT license, and it's on GitHub under Yozhik, Yozhik. That's how you pronounce it. Right, so let's say you have a remote call, you give it arguments, uh, but you're afraid it's going to fail. There is a very easy way to instrument it, and you can use macros. We supply macros like good old C. Easy start and easy end. There is a label, and the label is just arbitrary string, and all execution of remote call in this line of code are going to be recorded under this label, saying that this is what happened. This was a successful call, and this was a bad call. And this is a many-to-many -many mapping. So you can have the same line of code using different labels depending on the arguments, or you can have multiple calls under the umbrella of a single label. For example, you want to monitor all database, all network separately. There is also a more uh, boilerplate version without macros where you can define exactly what is the configuration. That previous one just used the global default configuration. But here you can tweak all the little details, set up all the different circuit breakers, etc., etc., and then you just run it and it executes. 
and I have a live demo showing exactly what we mean by all this mess. This one. This one. Okay, so it's a stream of execution, and these bars here represent the time it took for a certain remote service to give us an answer. And this is an eventful stream. Everything is cool. Everything is within SLA, although we do see difference in time for the running time of the remote service. It's some sort of a long tail distribution. Everything is fine. Uh, what we don't like is to see this situation. It's random, so it can take some time until it happens. Okay, see, failure. We should have another failure soon, like this. Okay. So the remote service, for some reason, stopped responding uh, or became painfully slow. So we had a timeout here. And then we made another call, and it timed out as well. And in fact, we see 12 timeouts in a row. So I have a feeling that maybe after this one, we're just wasting our time and their time. So what we want to do is we want to automatically handle this situation. And, uh, okay, so this is one example. Maybe not the best example. Let me generate another one, more illustrative. All pseudo-random. Uh, here is one. Okay, so we set our circuit breakers to say, if you see four timeouts in a row, or three timeouts in the last four events, you break the circuit. You say, I'm no longer going to make the call to the service because it's silly. And then you make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven skips. Then you say, okay, maybe it's back. I don't know. So you make a probing call. You try. It times out. Oh, boy. So you continue with skipping. Skip, 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 skip. Then probe. This probe was a successful one. And this one, and that one, and that one. So you say, OK, I'm going to fix the circuit. The, the circuit is no longer deemed broken. I'm mending it and continuing with my life. Uh, now, you can tweak it as much as you want. In fact, if you consider this to be too long, or, or that to be too long, if you want to respond uh, immediately to a, a fixed service, or if you think that you should probe more often, you just configure your system and you say, uh, let me probe more and let me mend faster. So here was one example, here's another. So indeed, we changed our configuration and now we're probing more often. Every fifth call is a probe and then one successful probe is good enough for us to restore the circuit into a different state. Now, there is something, of course, we cannot deal with, unfortunately. Uh, basically, it's this situation. So if you have just random spikes occasionally, things time out. We cannot predict this. We're not clairvoyant. And there is nothing you can do after the fact, because the system is back to normal, whatever normal is for you. Uh, that's the best we can do. Now, in terms of circuit breakers, the ones we're using in this demonstration are pretty simple. They're just counting the number of good and bad events. Uh, but you can, of course, introduce, by deriving from our classes, you can introduce your own business logic that can be more interesting and uh, Certainly, you can introduce the time dimension because we just count. But you can say, if we had three failures in the last two minutes, they are time stamped, so you can do this. Um, so that's it. Uh, in terms of what are plans for the future, what happened there? That's very telling. I have no idea. So we want a C++ 11, 14, 17, 20 extension to this because you, you want to compile with a mature compiler and use lambdas to, to do everything you do now. We also want a, a, an asynchronous scheduler like they have in Java library 
and this would both allow you to execute your already asynchronous calls using this instrumentation. But if you have now a blocking call that you just didn't bother making synchronous, we want to allow this to you as part of the instrumentation. So instead of returning a result and waiting for it to finish, you can just return maybe a future promise and then if you want, you block on it to get the result, if there is a result. Uh, some people ask about the overhead, so I, I will spare you that question. The overhead is uh, fairly small. You just do lookups and structures to find the configuration and the history for the label. Even that can be spared because you can uh, use your owned by you and in your local scope uh, history object and configuration object, and then we don't need to reach into any lookup structures. It also helps with being uh, thread safe if you own everything. Also encapsulation, if you write your own libraries that does this instrumentation, and there is a possibility of label clash between things going inside the library and things going outside, uh, you do well by hiding this and using some local structures. Uh, and apart from that, we're running things that potentially execute for hundreds of milliseconds and time out. And then the, the additional maybe microseconds that you do lookups is not as important. Okay, I'm ready to take questions now, if you want. Do you have any questions? <coughs> Even better? <laughs> You're comfortable with that? I'm, I'm okay. You can read the documentation on the website.